Welcome, everybody, to the very first episode in what I hope to be a new ongoing series that I'm calling Forgotten Variants. It's kind of a spin-off of Forgotten First, kind of tweaked off of Chasing Ghosts. Just the idea behind this being, this is a chance for me to talk about some variants that might not be considered ghosts. They're not that hard to find. They're not that pricey, but yet they're not super cheap either. I can't really cover them in dollar bin digging, and they don't really have a place for me in my current lineup of things that I talk about. So I got into looking at a, a certain run of a comic, and I just like, you know what? There's a lot of good variants in here. I just kind of want to dig in a little bit more on, and uh, I didn't have a place for it. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to create one. So work in progress to be sure. Tell me what you think of the comments. If you like it, you have suggestions, things you want to see, let me know. I'm not looking to cover, like, again, those super high, super hard to find variants. That's already going to be done in Chasing Ghosts. There's already a place for that. This is just more of those things. You know what? There's just some interesting variants that people might not have missed. They don't even know exist. And it's just things that people have forgotten about, basically. Things that might have been pricey long ago and are now are just super cheap books or just completely ignored in the aftermarket. Mostly because people just aren't aware that they're out there. So that's the kind of stuff I like looking into. I like looking into the stuff that other people aren't looking at. At. And uh, I find things are much cheaper usually that way, which uh, helps my wallet. That being said, if you like what I'm doing here, please like, subscribe, hit the alert button so you don't miss any of the content here. I'm still trying to make sure everything goes out at least once a day, working shows back into the rotation that might have been uh, sitting on the sidelines for a little bit, like the CBSI Star Wars comic show and those first appearance spotlights, looking to add new things like the uh, artist retrospective and potentially this forgotten variants. Uh, show as well and just kind of work things in the rotation see what's working what's not and uh, what people like to see because uh, i'm just having fun creating content hopefully you guys are enjoying uh watching it and uh, like i said let me know in the comments what you think and uh just hang on for a second and we're gonna dive right into after the intro my uh first run at this uh forgotten variants Okay, so as I mentioned in the open, a, a particular title actually got me thinking about this potential series and this idea. So that's kind of where I'm focusing in on just for this first first video. This is not going to be the ongoing thing. I'm not going to theme everything up. It's I'm thinking in my head it's still going to be a hodgepodge of ideas and books that just kind of come across my uh, my awareness and things I just want to look into. Uh, that's kind of my forward vision for what's to come. But still, for this first inaugural episode... It's a title, Secret Avengers got me thinking about this, so that's why I'm going to start here, because in looking at this run from 2010, there were a lot of interesting little variants that I just figured were kind of cool, and I just wanted to kind of look into them, just a tiny bit. So, let's just kick things off with the fact that, starting with this run, uh, this one had a lot of variants, including some high incentives. The first six issues in particular, starting with this beast with uh, issue one, we're all one in 75 incentives. One in 75 is an odd number and it's a high number. Like not a lot of shops order 75 copies of a book and a secret Avengers is you know offshoot Avengers title. I know Avengers was much bigger back in 2010 than where it's at now. Not to say Avengers is not big now, but secondary Avengers titles these days wouldn't move enough. I think to really warrant a one in 75 though. They do still do them in one 100s. That being said, one in 75 for these first few issues, and I dig them. They're all uh, Mike Diodato covers. I love these kind of design. They all have this similar background vibe with the big A uh, behind them. So you got Beast going on issue one, and then issue two, you got Moon Knight, which is a fantastic cover as well. This one is uh, gets a little bit pricey, so keep an eye on keep an eye on this one. Issue three has got this pretty cool Valkyrie uh, that I kind of dig. Again, all with that Avengers backdrop, that big A in the background. Uh, number four. Pretty awesome Nova. I'm just you know flying right out of the cover. Again, gorgeous Diodato art. I, I dig him. He he does a good job, I think, in uh, doing cover work as well as interiors. Uh, I don't think enough people give him credit, uh, the credit he deserves. Uh, and then this uh, War Machine on issue five is also kind of cool. You get that nice little you know metal riveted kind of like background going going behind him. So each of these A's in the background are kind of unique to the character that they are spotlighting on the front, including. This, number six, which you get Steve Rogers, which I believe he's going by Super Soldier at this time in the Marvel Universe. And uh, you can see it's got the chainmail blue uh, background there from the A on him here. 
Also be aware, I think it was a one per store. This same cover was used for issue one. I didn't include it because it wasn't a one in 75 variant, but there is this same cover, but with like a white backdrop that is for issue one, I believe. And it's a one per store. I want to think that's what I, I kind of gathered and looking out online. And that's what that in, incentive was, or not incentive. That's what that variant was all about, but didn't kind of fit this, this theme and this vibe. So I didn't include it. Plus it was a duplicate. So issue six, this one in 75, it was definitely cool. Now this set, I just kind of included it as a set because I don't want to, they're, they're all basically kind of the same idea, same kind of thing. So I just kind of grouped them together. So I'm just going to kind of quickly go over what's available in chunks. These are not broken out by title. It's just in chunk in looking at these things. You can see like the Moon Knight, nine, six, 500 bucks or 300 bucks raw, 250 or a hundred bucks for the Valkyrie cover on uh, issue three. And there's one also for 70 for the Valkyrie, which, you know, it gets a little bit cheaper as we go through this list. And then on the page two, you can see a not was like a nine two forty nine dollars for issue one, fifty bucks raw, forty bucks raw, twenty eight bucks raw. Oh, it looks like it was pricey to start, but now we're seeing there's plenty of copies that are not that bad for one in seventy five. So now we're talking about prices in the thirty two fifty range for that beast for issue one. That's half ratio. That's not terrible. And we still have a few more. We still have a few more on the available side. That number five war machine twenty bucks. $28, $23, 20 bucks, 24 bucks, Nova, Beast. Now, again, those are those covers. Moon Knight still seems to be on the highest end, and that Valkyrie seems to be, you know, the runner-up uh, for these six covers in as far as pricing goes. And then the other four seem to be things you can get for half ratio. Just, just keep an eye on that. So just be aware of the pricing for those. And when you look at what's actually sold for this grouping as well, you can see it's kind of supported by uh, by what's here. So 118 bucks, it looks like, for that Moon Knight Raw. Best offer, 120. Uh, somebody bought a lot of all one through six of all these covers. Best offer, 110 bucks. So I think that was a good deal, personally. And it looks like they included that extra Captain America I was talking about as well. There's seven covers in that picture uh, down here on the second one down on the list. Uh, again, Valkyrie seventy-five dollar best offer, and then somebody scooped up the Moon Knight for twenty-eight bucks as well, forty-five for the Nova. So prices are all kind of over the place. Now, moving on through the list, it's not just those those number ones and number one through six. We can also go back to issue four, which not only did it have that one in seventy-five variant, it also had this pretty awesome um, Chris Bacallo. Bacallo, don't know the proper way to say his name, but. This number four, it's that Women of Marvel kind of variant. I think this one was actually a 1 in 15 incentive, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is a 1 in 15 incentive on this one, which starts a run of a bunch of 1 in 15s uh, for this title. And I just kind of dig it. I think I found this one in a $5 variant box not that long ago, and I just had to scoop it up because it's just pretty cool with Valkyrie with that, you know, big broadsword uh, on the cover. It was definitely a cool image. Now, for this one, if you look at what's out there for it, it's about $15. You can see, you can get a, grab a copy for $15. Bucks. I'm not going to give you a full listing and run of uh, all of the available copies, as I might have done on previous series and things before. I'm just going to give you, like, examples. So, a couple of examples available and sold is really just to give you a broad scope idea of what these books kind of run. So, for this, there's a copy out there you can buy for $15 bucks if you're shopping for one. Definitely not too bad. And if you want to look at what actually sold recently... You can see one sold for $10 plus shipping. It's not terrible. Definitely not terrible for this. And I kind of dig it. For 1 in 15, it's not bad. And as we go through this series, you'll see there's a lot of variants that run through the Secret Avengers run that are really low priced. Uh, they're, they're pretty cheap when you, when you consider the price of variants in a lot of cases these days. And we go to issue number five. Again, duplicating efforts from the first run of 1 in 75. Here's a 1 in 15 for issue number five. That's kind of spotlighting Superhero Squad. Kind of cool, kind of fun. I've seen this one. I haven't scooped this one up, but, you know, there it is. Uh, I believe a few titles had this uh, Superhero Squad. I think it was one of those theme months that they did. Hey, let's just do Superhero Squad incentives. So that's what they did. Also, a 1 in 15 incentive on this guy. And it's just kind of cool. It's kind of different. But if you want to look at what this is out there, like if you're looking, shopping for one, you can see 4 bucks, 8 bucks. Not too bad for 1 in 15. It's basically cover price or double cover with free shipping. So not too, too bad there. And uh, if you look at what actually sold on this thing, it is also not a pricey book. One sold by now for $1.35. A dollar book for this 1 in 15. So maybe I could have covered this one a dollar been digging. But I didn't buy it. So I'm not going to say that this was uh, one of my finds. But it's out there. You can find cheap copies still. So keep an eye out for that.
Moving on, issue number six is one that I do really like. I just dig this cover. This uh, It goes in the whole vampire cover theme that they did for Marvel this particular month. A lot of t titles, like Cap, Hulk, Thor, I think all of them. They had a bunch of titles. They had theme variants, and that's what they were doing back in those days in Marvel. And this was the vampire month. And uh, number six here for Secret Avengers had, you know, a little zombified Ant-Man trying to bite, you know, Black Widow there. Definitely think it's a cool cover. And again, another 1 in 15 variant. So not a super high incentive, not terribly hard to find. Not that they're simple or easy to find, but there are copies out there because the incentives were low enough and the print run was high enough because I still think we're talking about that 40,000 kind of a print run range. So there's going to be plenty of copies to be had, a couple thousand probably for these out there. And uh, what do we have available if you're shopping for this? 11 17 19 bucks. A little pricier than the others, uh, than the last couple, but not by much. Definitely not by much. Definitely still affordable, and it's 1 in 15, so it's still pretty close to that ratio range. Definitely not terrible. And what sold? When we look what actually sold, 17.75 was uh, the last one I could see that sold uh, for a decent price. There you go. Not too bad. Not too bad. Also, with issue number six, there is this uh, Valkyrie cover, this other, another Women of Marvel cover. Uh, I don't believe there was incentive attached to this. There was no ratio or uh, retailer incentive that came with this. I think this was just maybe an uh, open order, perhaps. Perhaps it was a qualifying order, like where they had to order a certain number of copies of some title to be able to buy, whatever. But this Women of Marvel cover, another Valkyrie, is definitely pretty cool. And just one I kind of want to throw in. So even it's not fitting that incentive variant. I just still kind of wanted to include it. So what's available? 1917 for one of these from Canada. So it's a little bit extra shipping. It might take a little longer to get to you, but still under 20 bucks. Ain't too bad. So I felt like it was worth covering here. And uh, what actually sold recently, best offer in about 25 bucks. Again, not too bad. Definitely not too bad. Don't know how many you know copies there are of this. Not going that granular, that deep into this, but just ballparking it. This wasn't an incentive, so don't know how many copies are out there anyway. So just keep that in mind. Now, next up, this one actually got has been a little pricey for a little while because it's a Moon Knight cover. This Secret Avengers number seven. So we've left that 175 grouping with some duplicate, duplicated efforts on variants, and we moved on to issue number seven, who had uh, this Moon Knight cover. This Tron, uh, I believe Tron was the theme for this month. So a lot of books, again, theme month, a lot of books had this Tron theme. And uh, for this one, they chose Moon Knight in uh, Secret Avengers 7 because, you know, he's part of this squad. So it's not like it's out of the blue. Or why is Moon Knight on here? Moon Knight's part of this story. Again, a 1 in 15 incentive. Not too high. Should be copies available. But still, if you want to buy one of these, it's about 80 to 100 bucks raw right now. Those are the copies that are out there that you can really buy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's your call. If you want to spend that money, you can, but that's what you're talking about when you're talking about this Moon Knight cover. And if you want to look at what actually sold recently, you know, $65, uh, August 24th. Straight up. And then with shipping, it's like 70 bucks. So definitely not on the cheaper end, but it, it is what it is. Moving on. There's, again, I'm covering a few on this one. So we got number 11. This uh, Simon Bian Simone Bianchi. Bianchi. Don't know if I'm saying the name right. This... Issue number 11 has a pretty cool... I love when they play around with the uh, the trade dress, the title. And in here, it kind of fits the art a little bit better. So they kind of tweaked it a little bit. I kind of dig that. And this is a 70th anniversary for Cap. So that's why you got Cap front and center there, an old school outfit. Definitely cool. And again, another 1 in 15 for this series, which 1 in 15 seem to be their kind of go-to number for uh, Secret Avengers. And if you're shopping for one of these bad boys, this thing can cost you, you know, 12 bucks. 1242. There's a copy out there right now. And if you want to see what actually sold, uh, I only found a graded copy and it was 75 bucks for a 98. That's not terrible. $75 for a 98 ain't too, too bad. Uh, I mean, you know what you're getting, you're getting a 98. So that's the copy I found. So that's what I included, uh, in this case, cause I didn't, there was no raws, there was no raws to share. So, uh, that was the only sale for the last three months. So you can see that sometimes some of these things aren't moving a lot and there's not actually a lot of copies available online. Cause some of these incentives, I think they're just forgotten. Shops don't know that it's an incentive. They just think it's some crappy copy of a run that nobody cares about. So dig in those boxes. You never know what you might come across. Now, this one kind of blends into the background because it's kind of got that black and white vibe. And this is a movie theme month. And I think this is a Charlie Chaplin uh, Modern Times kind of homage here with Thor on the cover for Secret Avengers 12. Again, another 1 in 15 incentive, I believe it is. And uh, 
again, the movie movie themes, movie covers, I think, was the theme for Marvel that month. And uh, this one is, again, one you can find out there. What's available? A 9.8 for 40 bucks. 40 bucks for a 9.8. Ain't bad at all. Or you can buy it raw for 15 bucks. I mean, that you, you might as well just guarantee yourself the 9.8 and spend 40 for that for that one because, I don't know, definitely not too bad. I might even consider buying it after looking at that one. But what actually sold recently on this thing, again, sometimes these things don't move, and there's none sold. None sold in the last three months. So not a lot of copies out there. They're not even that expensive when they are out there, but yet they're not moving because, again, these things are just forgotten about. Like nobody's paying attention or nobody's really you know looking into these things. I'm not saying that these should all be more. I'm not saying that either. I'm just pointing out the fact that sometimes things get forgotten about and prices start to dip and uh, things get lost into the ether. Of all the covers that are out there, things just get lost and lost in the shuffle and completely forgotten about, which is kind of why I wanted to do this series. There's plenty of variants out there that are pretty cool covers and uh, either high incentives or even if they're low incentives, they're just things worth noting that you know, we should all be reminded of. That's all. So that's why I decided to do this. If you like it, please let me know in the comments. Again, this one's a little bit longer because I decided to cover a bunch of bunch from this first run of Secret Avengers. So we're moving on to number 13. Also have another one in, was it one in 15, I think, again? Yep, another one in 15. This sideways cover, this uh, kind of giving you the errors of beasts. And I think that's kind of what they did. I think it was like an X-Men month where they gave a lot of different titles had multiple era characters. Like they just kind of showed them through the ages. And for Secret Avengers, since he's on this team, they covered Beast here on this title for this one in 15. Again, pretty cool. I think that's a, it looks like a John Cassie, but I'm not positive, man. Can't really see the uh, the signature there. I probably have that wrong. Yeah, it's not. Ca no, it's definitely not Cassidy. That, that's the wrong hairstyle. Anyway, moving on. What's available? You can buy this thing for seven fifty or twenty five bucks. A little all over the place, but copies are there. What's actually sold? Well, here's another one where none actually sold the last couple of months. So this is one again, one of those books. You just sometimes people just don't know about them, and so nobody knows about it. Nobody's gonna be buying it. If nobody's buying it, there's not many people selling it. Just how things shake out. Moving on. I think we lose the 1 in 15 incentives uh, from here. And we go to number 14 for the Secret Avengers. And I think that it went with some sort of a you know military theme here. And you can see there's Rogers. You know, Rogers right there. Another Captain America kind of cover. And I think this one was a 1 in 20. Yeah, this is a 1 in 20 incentive. And uh, yeah, definitely interesting. It's definitely different. Uh, and what's out there? You can buy this one in twenty for nine bucks, nine bucks. So less than half ratio, not too bad, really. And when you look what actually sold for this thing, uh, one sold for six fifty. So definitely pretty cheap, uh, all things considered. I get it; it's not the flashiest cover in the world, but I kind of dig it. I like the simplicity of the the trade dress, and it's just a different look. So if you're a big supporter of the military, this could be a cover for you. Got the pretty cool Hummer in the back, desert backdrop, yeah. Roger's nameplate there on the soldier. Definitely kind of cool, but yeah, it is what it is. It's definitely not a pricey book. So if you want one, you can find one for a uh, pretty reasonable price. Moving on, number 16. Number 16, we have, no, nope, I was wrong. We do have another one in 15 incentive. So here we are with another one in 15 incentive. And, uh, you know, this one got the whole flying car. I think this is Colson's flying car. Uh, I can't remember, Lucy. I can't remember what he named his car in uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but. Definitely cool cover. You got, again, Steve Rogers, Super Soldier, Beast, Black Widow there, firing away, getting shot at in the flying car. One in 15 incentive. Uh, copies available, three bucks. You can buy this for three bucks or eight fifty. Not a pricey book. Just saying. I get it. It's not the flashiest cover either, but it is what it is. It's an incentive. It's one in 15 of a later, it's issue 16 of this series. As the run goes deeper and deeper, the print run starts to get a little bit lesser and lesser. As we go on issue to issue, it drops readers. They start to bleed readers and uh, print runs start to dwindle. And uh, what's actually sold for this thing? Another one, none sold. Even with three bucks. It's out there for three bucks. And nobody's bought one yet. Not saying you need to go out and spend three bucks on it, but you can probably spend three bucks on worse things. Moving it on, moving it on. Issue 22. This one's kind of cool in that it's a wraparound cover. Definitely pretty cool. You know, this little wraparound cover. And again, don't forget, Agent Venom is part of this squad or became part of the squad later in the run. And uh, Valkyrie, and you got Hawkeye, Captain Britain. 
definitely a cool team and definitely a fun series. Now, yeah. and Rick Reminder, definitely cool run. That being said, this one, issue 22, the variant edition. This one had a print run of, not print run, incentive ratio of 1 in 30. So this went on the higher end uh, from what we've seen as of late. So higher incentive uh, is going to make this a little bit of a higher price, but not too, too bad. So when we look at what's actually available, $27.73. So it's still asking price just around ratio. Not terrible. Not terrible. Again, this one's come from the UK. So shipping's a little bit higher. Got a watcher, but prices could be worse. Prices could be worse. And we look at what actually sold. I think it's still right in that range. Yeah, 18 bucks. So it's even less than ratio there coming from Canada again. Yeah, a lot of these incentives, again, Canada, UK, don't know why they have all the incentives, but they seem to be on at least this Secret Avengers run. I kind of dig the next one. Uh, I think it was called like a Moulin Rouge uh, kind of theme. I don't know what that was or what the full arcing theme was for all of the books. I don't know if they were all Moulin Rouge, but I think that's what they were going with here for this issue number 26. But now we're getting near the end of this run. We're getting near the end of this series. And issue 26, this was a 1 in 25 incentive. So this we're getting a little bit tougher to find, you would think. This The print runs are definitely going down at this point. Uh, but yeah, who knows? What's available, though, even with this 1 in 25 incentive, you can buy this for 8 bucks or 4 50 Super, super cheap, realistically, when you look at it. So that's, again, why I wanted to talk. These are like, this is almost like doing the top variants on a budget that I do with Marco on our Wednesday show. It's a little bit idea of that, but it's not, I don't plan to theme it like I am right now. I'm just playing a hodgepodge, throw some stuff out there when I do this uh, video series going forward. Don't know if it's going to be a regular weekly or just something I do staggered. I don't know. Just figure out the schedule as we move on. Now that we hit 1000, I feel like I got to come up with something. So I'm coming up with some new ideas and uh, refreshing some old ones. But that being said, what's actually sold for this? Uh, for this one, we got a copy that sold for three fifty, three dollars and fifty cents. Definitely not expensive book. That's undercover people. Undercover for one in twenty five, late run Secret Avengers. I get it. This is not a key. There's not like some huge moment first appearance that everybody's talking about. But I'm telling you, these are the kinds of weird things that people like to hunt later down the line. Just completionists and people that just like to hunt odd things. So if you can find some of this stuff for cheap, or you do buy it for cheap. I just say buy it and sit on it for a little while because you never know what book might pop in the future. Things pop all the time out of nowhere. Just saying. And on that note, I think issue 28 is not the last in the series, but I think this is the last incentive variant uh, that I, I think we have to cover here. And this is, again, a pretty cool cover. Uh, I think it's Dale Keown. Keown. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. I never knew how to say it from uh, even back in the 90s when we did Hulk and, and Pitt. But... Uh, this is, again, a 1 in 25, so it's on the higher end of the ratios, even though we're getting later into the series. And we look at what's available for this guy. six ninety five, nine bucks 9 for 1 in 25. Definitely not pricey. And like you said, you look at this team. It's an interesting team. Cloak and Dagger, Spider-Woman, Iron Fist, Luke Cage. It's just it's a hodgepodge of characters. Who knows what kind of team-ups and things we're going to see, what kind of stories get called back to once we get some Marvel stories in the future, because... The old the OG Avengers are now gone. Like we're not gonna be seeing like a bunch of Chris Evans. Maybe we get Chris Evans one day back as Cap, but realistically, probably not. And if we do, it'll be once or twice. That's it. Things are gonna have to shift. They're gonna have to evolve. We're gonna have to focus in on other characters, and that's where titles like this start to become more interesting, at least to me. Because I mean, what's everybody talking about now? Well, Shang Chi, Shang Chi, he's gonna be an Avenger. So everybody's looking at Avengers books where he actually was Avenger, which are not many. He was not a teen guy until recent years when they just started throwing everybody into teams. So I don't know. It's just things like that. You try to stay ahead of the curve, buy things when they're cheap and you yeah, know, just be patient. What's actually sold for this thing. Now that I've given that little, uh, little side note, 15 bucks. So 15 bucks. And looks, this one looks like it was signed, signed copy for 15 bucks, but that's what actually sold. So that's my example. It's still under ratio signature or not. I don't know. Definitely interesting, and this is just, again, I just wanted to look into the Secret Avengers run, because some of these were some cool covers and some interesting, you know, incentives for a title that didn't have a huge run. It's a good read, uh, some interesting stories, and who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in the future? But hopefully you guys like that. Uh, thanks for stopping by and checking it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Again, this was just my first go at this. I'm not going to cover this many books every time out. I just did a lot this time because 
this is what I was doing anyway. So I felt like, you know what? I'm doing this anyway. I might as well just film it and uh, see what you guys think. Because like I said, going forward, I'm probably just going to do a hodgepodge of a, you know, four covers, five covers, something like that. Something in the normal range to keep the kind of, you know, runtime down on the video. Don't want to do a half hour every time out. But uh, I don't know. Like I said, let me know what you think. Uh, if you want to see more of these, I'll definitely try. If you want to see more information than what I'm giving on the books, if, I, if you really, really want like the CGC numbers, I can work that in. If you really want to know the print run numbers, like exact, like I do with Chasing Goats, maybe I'll work that in. I don't know if I'm giving too much information, too little. You guys tell me what you find helpful and what you guys find valuable, and I will try to accommodate. Now, that being said, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you are, please like, subscribe, hit the alert button. Keep telling your friends, because even though we hit my goal of 1,000 subscribers, I still like to keep growing this thing. Let's build this community. Let's keep talking about books together, and uh, let's keep having fun. All right? I'll see you guys next time.